Alright everyone, it's time for the occult, video number 320 on my literary projects and some uh, aberrant criticism thereof about some of the uh, nonsense that I see posted online about my books, some of the nonsense people tell me with regards to my books, and number one, I want to make this clear because otherwise people will rant about me complaining and whining about getting criticized. Um, fair criticism is fair criticism. And it's not sour grapes because, I mean, I expect this to happen. It has been anyway. It doesn't really matter if it's in a literary sense. Content creators, if they create anything uh, of note at all, if they have any audience at all, they're always going to have that person that camps out on the videos to spam hate towards them. They're always going to have the person that just lurks on, on the, probably has fucking Google Alerts set up just to downvote everything. I don't really care because it's unavoidable, and it happens to people of literally every kind of content. You can be as apolitical and positive and friendly towards everyone you encounter as possible, and it'll still end up happening. There'll be someone that'll be like, well, you're too nice, it's kind of creepy. So I don't have sour grapes about that. But I would look to, like to point out that some of the criticisms that I see uh, or that people tell me are blatantly false. For instance, I think the first big mythology is that I don't sell many copies of my books. I've seen multiple people who they insinuate, I guess, that they're in the know or something, say, well, Styx isn't making very much from his books. He's a cuck for Trump and therefore reliant upon his political donations, you know, Patreon or Subscribestar. Um, I make more off of my books than I do off of Patreon and Subscribestar combined. Uh, to be clear, I'm selling between 4,500 and 6,000 paperbacks roughly per month, uh, and the total number over time is in the six-figure range. Uh, so yes, that is my main, technically speaking, my main work that I do. At this point, if you also consider like merch and streaming income, it, there's more of a balance than there was. For a while, it was like three quarters of my money was coming from books. Um, it's, it's a little bit less as a ratio now because I've branched out more. But yes, I sell an incredible number of books. I've sold over a thousand copies of Book of Forbidden Knowledge already this month, and there's still a week and a half in October, for example. That's one of the, the perennial bestsellers. Critical Race Theory, Occult Memetics, 101 Commie Jokes. For some reason, some of the shorter like political content that I've written, it takes off. I think it's because it gets a lot of ratings right up. And so it's higher on the lists, and so it gains some staying power, and it becomes like a perennial source of income, but I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> the second thing is that what I do is, according to some of my critics, supposedly easy. Now, I've taken through, I, I did a blog post like a couple of years ago, under the best of circumstances, where I'm working with an OCR document, I still have to go through line by line, I have to correct any formatting errors reformat the whole work regardless. Any spelling errors. I like to de-archaicize some of the language. So like if it's if it was written by someone in, in London, um, labor will be spelled with a U. I Americanize that usually. I go through and I do this. Um, I realize that technically speaking it's still verbally appropriate. It's grammatically correct for, for an audience in England, but most of my audience is not in England. And so I choose to Americanize the language typically uh, outside of quotations. In some cases, if it's quoting a primary document, that's a, a different story. One of the banes of my existence are footnotes, because of course they'll never be properly formatted when you're plopping them into the work, especially when you're changing things like the page size you're working with isn't the same as the original document. Um, the, the spacing of the lines and so forth, it's, it's never going to quite match up. Therefore, I take them and I put them in line. I take them from being footnotes and I put them in line. This causes some formatting issues in and of itself, but it's, it's still sim more simplistic. I don't like works where I have to go through two, three hundred footnotes. Those have to be individually done too. For each work, I also have to write a foreword, which means, I mean, I'm not just skimming through the work absentmindedly. I'm actually reading it while I go. That's the other thing. <clears throat> it's not easy because a lot of people don't like reading. I have no problem with it. I enjoy it. And so I guess I've read hundreds and hundreds of occult works as well. And then there are those that I study from that I don't even get to edit. That's the other big problem. The other big problem is I have to go through about twice as many works as I'm actually releasing for context. In some cases, a work will cite other works. Maybe I have to check that other work. Maybe it's a springboard to other literature. I always consider it a really, really lucky day when I go into a work and there'll be like a list of further reading at the end, which is not, by the way, particularly common in a lot of the shorter works that I edit. And that's, I think, part of why people think that the editing process is simplistic, because a lot of the works that I release, they're under 100 pages. 
But there's a problem. A lot of those works are initially a lot longer than that, and it's about reformatting. That's number one. And number two, <laughs> again, you've got to realize the whole purpose of the project is to essentially release modern editions of works that might go extinct. Well, it's, it's mainline publishers typically don't do the short works. It's up to people that are more independently minded. And also, you got to realize it's a seven day a week job in addition to the work that I already do for videos. So like I do this every morning. I make five videos every single day at, at, at a minimum at this point. Um, I may drop back down to four temporarily, but I spend several hours every day, seven days a week doing that. I spend several additional hours doing that. I'm working more than 40 hours a week at what I do. I, I don't really think that there's a problem with me having a reasonable income for the amount of work that I do. Even if you believe the work's not worthy, it's subpar, blah, blah, blah. Well, I found a typo in one of your works. Your editing sucks. That's the other thing. A lot of the criticism ends up hyperbolic. And again, I don't even think that a lot of it is literary in nature. And I would say <clears throat> for the vast majority of people that will spout off about my editing works or the things that I write, they've never written anything. They've never published anything. They've never tried to edit a work beyond like they went to high school and they had to edit their five page essay. That's wonderful. I saw people and, and this is not a joke. When I was at UVM, we did peer editing of one another's uh, works sometimes in a scientific context. So if I'm in an anthropology class and it's about anthropological writing and I'm reading through someone's literature, there were times when I just said fuck it, uh, essentially, and I didn't even like correct half of the errors that I saw because I truly believe, I truly believe that a large minority of college kids in the goddamn country are illiterate. I, I hate to say this, but other than the English students, it, there the work tends to be a bit better if it's, you know, not the most basic level English class. Someone's taking a throwaway minor, and they're like, hey, I'll just get a C plus, I'll get my minor, who gives a shit? Uh, with that exception of people that are more dedicated to like a literary course, maybe philosophy or something, there are some problems. I can understand why people who work in pharmacies or as surgeons or something, they're usually the handwriting is illegible. Uh, because it doesn't really matter because it's probably they're spelling everything wrong anyway. It's almost like its own like weird language Creole at some, at some points. Uh, but then when people uh, are highly opinionated about how uh, my literary works suck or whatever, uh, all I have to do is go and see how many copies I've sold in the last 24 hours and then I just have a good chuckle. So and that's the other thing. A lot of people probably think that if I even make a video on the subject, I'm like about hurt over it. Actually, it's a form of amusement. This happens when people try to get my attention by making inane videos about me. I've stopped bothering to justify them with responses unless it's a considerably larger user or something like that for the most part because it's just attention seeking, attention whore nonsense. Uh, but they think that I'm upset. It's like, no, you made a video about me. You might have been rambling for the last 30 minutes. I think you're the one that's actually butthurt at me. Probably, I don't know whether it's at my success or whether you think that I don't deserve it or whether you have a personal issue with me of one kind or another. Maybe it's political, maybe it's religious, whatever. Uh, but I see this, I, I've, I've dealt with this for more than 10 years. So it's not my first rodeo. So it doesn't have anything to do with animus. It has to do with... I don't know, you wasted your time. I just thought I would make this video uh, to make clear a few mythologies with regards to my work. Yes, I sell plenty of copies. You don't, you don't need to worry about how many books I sell. It's, you know, it doesn't involve you. And if you don't like me, then you know, I'm sure that you wish that that were the case, but <laughs> you're wrong. Uh, I could fill a goddamn library with the volumes that I've released. Oh, the other thing is that all I do is I copy uncopyrighted works and that I put them on Amazon. Actually, that's what started my literary project, noticing that a lot of people did that. They didn't edit the works. They took the, the PDF, the original scans, they put a new cover on it. That's all they did. There are millions and millions of works on Amazon that, are, by the way, tend to be priced more than mine as well, that are basically, I mean, in the sense of having a primary source document for academic purposes, I suppose that's perfectly fine, but they're using scans that often have all sorts of formatting errors, imperfections. Uh, every, every note that anyone ever scribbled in that book is still there. I have to remove them all because mine are fresh editions. So that's the, I guess, the last mythology there. So yeah, just calling out the people that constantly like lie online uh, about me supposedly not uh, being a heavyweight in the editing world. I assure you the opposite is quite true. That's about all.
Peace out.